You are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Guys, you guys are ready to have some fun. All right. Good morning, everybody. This is Colin, and this is the WHOA Podcast, right here, coming out of Gainesville, Florida, the greatest city in the nation. Completely biased comment. Uh Ty, what is up, my brother? I'm feeling good. I listened to the uh, Leadership Surge podcast on my way to work what? today. And, uh, yeah. Who does that belong I'm to? I'm the uh, latest <laughs> subscriber. Pretty good. That's awesome. You guys, we have a couple of incredible guests with us this morning, and I can't tell you how excited I am, not only because they're incredible guests, but because they are really, really great friends of mine, and I admire them so much in so many ways, and I'm gonna allow them to introduce themselves. So, Alex. You go first, my brother. What's up, man? What's I'm up? excited to be here. This is a bad ass. Can, can <laughs> you I say can, ass? You can say whatever okay, you want. Okay, so okay, I've already said it. Huh? So, <laughs> I could have, oops. But man, hey, this is a bad ass studio, dude. I'm excited to be here with you guys and um, talk leadership, talk life, talk business, the ups and downs of what it's like to be an entrepreneur, and uh, learn from my buddy Herb over here and have fun, man. It's it's badass because we're in a scooter shop. Dude. We're in an office studio. This is our office during the day. Studio by early morning. Scooter shop by day. <laughs> Boxing gym next door at 9, 9 a.m. Going to be like, you know, Sick, bumping. Dude. So if we don't hurry up and get this done by 9, you'll start hearing it. Uh, and, dude, you can fine. also it just run matter. across the street and buy your employees' awards, you know, at the trophy shop right over there if you need uh, it. You know, if somebody does something awesome, scooter sale, go buy um, a trophy. So I'm going to go ahead and apologize to my team in advance for never <laughs> going over there and buying trophies for anybody. <laughs> So the team sorry, wants team, their awards I all apologize. printed on fractures. I, I, I like that. Great, great plug there, Herb. Great plug. I love it. <laughs> that's right. That's actually better. Herb, what's up, my man? What's up, Colin? Good morning, bro. <laughs> Tell everybody who you are and what you do. Hey, my name's Herb Jones. Um, I am the chief marketing officer for a wonderful company that's based out of Gainesville here called Fracture. And we print your favorite moments directly to glass. It's a very modern, sort of minimalist uh, alternative to like traditional framing or canvas prints. It's awesome. That's it's, all you need to do. <laughs> I saw awesome. for the first time at the University of Florida, it was it was bad, man. But Alex, did you even tell everybody what you I do? I didn't, Nicole, I was like, man, I, I got so excited about where I, I am so, and what I'm so doing, dude. I'm to like, be here who and, is uh, that guy? Who, who is who, this I guy? don't know who that is. Yeah, so, so tell the world So, so hey, Alex Willis, CEO of Leadership Surge. We focus on frontline leadership, uh, specifically in the construction industry. And so we found a niche. We really um, come in to just help the frontline leader do a great job of leading people. I, I like to say, uh, think we help frontline leaders think of themselves as coaches. Me, I have a former football background player here at the University of Florida, Go Gators. Uh, shout out to my guys this year. Yeah. Um, and learned a lot from sports and how to really lead people and coach really, really well. And so we take that same concept into uh, the construction industry, helping them understand that no longer are they what I like to call the worker bees, they're coaches now. And so you have to really motivate, encourage, and inspire, and understand how to motivate a team so that you can go out and build a project from start to finish and ultimately uh, help your company be successful. Ty, these guys are incredible leaders, both of them in their own right. So I'm super excited to get in this conversation, but we always start with the origin stories, like how you came to be in this position, why you, like how you even got this into this niche of construction and how you got to fracture, like just give us a quick origin story of how that came to be. Herb, you go first. Herb, you go sure. first, man. Sure, so uh, I, I, I'm pretty much a Gainesville resident at this point. I moved here in 96 after getting out of the military to go to school. Um, and had designs to be a doctor. Um, I wanted to help people. And um, what happened was a pretty severe detour while I was in school. Um, uh, I really sort of fell in love with computers. Some friends and I started an e-commerce company in 1998. And um, if you remember, that was quite a long time ago. Um, there was no Google when we started uh, our e-commerce company, to give you some perspective. And um, it grew it up pretty big during the dot-com bust in 2003. It kind of all fell apart out from underneath us, but we all picked ourselves up and realized that uh, the, the, the internet was such an incredible leveling 
event for small businesses. It really gave you an opportunity to extend yourself in a way that allowed you to compete with much larger businesses. And um, just pursued my, my growing passion for digital marketing and digital sales and everything, e-commerce and lead gen on the internet. And uh, I've been following that path since then. I've worked for several market research firms and lead generation outfits and um, owned a small agency here in Gainesville, Florida, where I help the local companies with lead generation and, and website optimization and search engine optimization, email marketing, all the you know, traditional channels, um, and made a pretty tough call in 2013 to, uh, to close my small agency and join the Fracture team. They had a cr tremendous opportunity. They had a unique value proposition, a great product, and um, what they needed was really leadership from the marketing standpoint. Awesome. And, uh, since cool, then, cool. it's been a crazy cool. rocket ride of growth and yeah, a lot of fun. We'll get into a little bit. I'm excited to get into it. <laughs> Alex, what about you, brother? So it sounds like this guy was ready oh, and prepared for that, man. I mean, my story's a little different. So I, I, <laughs> I've been a serial entrepreneur, you know, uh, most of my adult life, you know. But, but uh, as far yeah. as getting into construction leadership funny story um, I followed doing what I love what makes me happy like your shirt says and it just so happened born and raised in Jacksonville Florida my buddy uh, runs the tax slayer bowl and so he runs the tax slayer bowl and they have this huge event where they bring in companies from all over Jacksonville and they bring in the teams and the coaches and they have this coaches lunching right before the teams play that you know New Year's Day bowl game and so somebody canceled on him and so he's scrambling. He's like, oh, shit, I need somebody to help me out. Willis, you're an athlete. I need you to get up here and do a talk for me. Can you come and do it? So I said, oh, man, sure. I'll help you out. <laughs> hey, Count me in. You no know. Worries. And got so this. got up there and um, just kind of talked about um, leadership, motivation, and that kind of stuff there just from an athletic standpoint. And when I came down off the stage, the senior vice president of one of the largest electrical contracting companies met me at the stage and said, hey, man, I know you know nothing about construction, but I think you're the guy who can help take our company to the next level and possibly change the industry. And so he said, hey, I'm gonna give you a call to talk about doing some work at our company and what that looks like. i never forget it, guys. I came home and told my wife, and she's like, what? Dude, you're the guy who just built our entertainment scissor and it failed when we put the television on it. How can, how can you teach somebody about construction? And so, it's just a cool story of how you know you really look for great people and you can teach them the skill and talent. And so this company brought me in, allowed me to really be creative and, and use my gifts and skill to just go around at different projects and then stay, at, stay in the field and watch field leaders. And then they gave me the freedom to go back and build a program. And so it was just really cool. The senior vice president, I'll never forget that we were in his office and he said, hey man, we're gonna send you to our smallest office. If it fails, no one knows this happened, right? <laughs> <laughs> so he sent me like, the middle of nowhere, and it was a huge success. And from there, uh, it just took off. It skyrocketed uh, within their company, going to about 15 of their locations across the country. And then from there, uh, my uh, the guy who brought me in originally was uh, promoted to the, the, uh, the president of the National Electrical Contractors Association. So he's now over every electrical co company in the country. And so he said, hey man, we're taking this road, this show on the road. And so uh, I've been riding his coattails, having a great time, but changing lives, impacting leaders. And so ideally what we focus on, the secret sauce I tell him, Colin, is that not only do we focus on company leadership, but we focus on making people better overall. And so it was a, it was a difficult pitch and sell and construction to say, guys, listen, the secret sauce is not just making them better for your company to make more profit, but to make better people. By giving them the skill set to be great at home and at work, man, they're gonna come to work on fire and they're gonna run through brick walls for you. And so we really begin to talk this work-life integration because I don't believe there's a such thing as balance. It's about being intentional. And we begin to show them how to be intentional with their life uh, to make those moments at home magical and memorable and at the same time how that c crosses over at work and we begin to marry senior leadership with field leadership because in often a lot of companies there's a huge divide there right so Phil says you know well the man's making money off of my back right and so all of a sudden we were able to show the compassion and the heart of senior leadership and how they cared about the field and the life of the field leadership and it really began to show this connection there and 
and companies begin to skyrocket, man, from productivity to profitability, and the sky's the limit there now. So now I'm starting to get into different areas of construction uh, outside of just uh, electrical, and it's just really cool, cool ride uh, and exciting. Okay, so how do you, I mean, I, I know you say you don't like the, the words work-life yep. balance, but more of an integration. So how, like what principles, like what are you doing to instill that? Because here's the one thing that I know about both of you guys, is that you're both incredible fathers, both incredible husbands. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but you both have daughters. Herb has four daughters, oh, you have two daughters. That's what I'm talking about, man. It is the right? magic <laughs> I have boys, so yeah, I don't dude. have to like, I don't, I don't know, know what it's like I having know, daughters. I don't know what that, I don't even know what that's like, dude. I'm a tea party guy, <laughs> fingernails painted. I'm the football player who's like, oh, are we going for massages this week? Yes, <laughs> pedicures. This is awesome. I'm really stoked about uh, going to school next week with my daughters for their uh, uh, final week of school, uh, daddy daughter spa. Oh, so I'll turn. be doing hair and fingernails that's the next Thursday. That's what I'm Thursday. talking about, man. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Nothing like it, dude. Dude, you're missing out. Colin. So, I mean, you guys. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna t share a quick story All about right. you in particular. Uh oh, because is this sensor for radio, dude? No, it's, it's good, man. Okay. Like I, <laughs> I just remember one time like scrolling on Facebook or something, and, and I see this these pictures, this story. I don't, I, I think it was I think it was Facebook. I don't know if it was video clips or something, but you woke up at like 4 a.m. Okay, you like. Where do you go to work out? Or where you were going to Gainesville yep. Health and Fitness yep. or something? Yep. So you go to Gainesville Health and Fitness, you come back home, you get in bed, and then you wait for your daughter to wake you up because she wants to work out with you and go work out at Gainesville Health and Fitness with you. <laughs> and you did all of that just so you could spend that time with her. And I'm like, man, this guy is like the greatest dad on the planet. And, and so like I admire both you guys in so many ways, like, but that's but it's stories like that, yeah. you know, that I'm just yeah, like, definitely. man, like this guy has it together. Well, well I'll tell you, I don't. I, you know, it's, it's a work in progress, and I tell all of our leaders and people that I meet with, you know, it's about being intentional, and it, it's simple but not easy. And I tell everybody that it's, it's simple. You know, um, it, it's really putting the time in and really understanding and listening. And I'm finding more and more the more I listen the more intentional I can be about really planning those special moments for them. Because there's times in my life when I wasn't working as hard as I am now or traveling as much as I am now, and I was wasting time with my family. So we're, we're just at home doing nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Sitting there watching television, doing nothing. Whereas now, because my schedule's crazy, because I'm traveling you know, several times a week all over the country, it's about making those meaningful moments and impactful times with my wife, Sabrina, my daughter, Alexis, and Aubrey, and it's really listening to what's meaningful and impactful for them and making it happen. That, that's Aubrey. So you were talking about Aubrey, and so Aubrey's a workout girl, man. She's five years old, dude. She does more push-ups than I can do. You know, and she loves them. She's like, Dad, that's a weak push-up. Your back's leaning down. So she's, I mean, she's hardcore, right? So that's her thing. And so for her to work out is it, huge. And so you think about that small little moment, uh, me jumping back in bed and uh, letting her wake me up. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm putting the, oh, is it time to work out already? You know, <laughs> I've already got an hour workout. In. <laughs> but for her, she's like, yeah, dad, come on now. We got to go to the gym. And so that was huge for her. And so finding those kinds of things with Sabrina, with Aubrey, uh, really makes an impactful life and me teaching those skill sets to our guys. So it comes down to us as men specifically, uh, we tend to like to be home, what I like to call home run hitters. All right? We're always swinging for the fence. In business, it made all of us in here who we are. You know, We swung for the fence, and that's why we're doing business. But we have to take a back seat to that and say, what does it look like to hit singles with our family? You know, To be consistent you know, and a great hitter, constantly always showing up, not the big hitters, you know, birthdays, you know, vacation. Oh, I'm working, but we're going to go on an amazing vacation. No, well, what can I do to my, write small love notes, write little smiley faces on the back? bathroom mirror, wake up in the morning, you know, go back to sleep so they can help me work out. So those little things, hitting singles is what makes us successful. Give us a tip that can get just anybody started with that. I like, think, I, 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 yeah. sometimes yeah. I just think it can be challenging to be intentional. Yep. Yeah. So is there anything tactical or a, a tip that you can? It is. <clears throat> for, for me, it started with setting 90 day goals with my family. 
just saying, okay, over the next 90 mm-hmm. days, what does it look like with Sabrina? So Good for job. example, I start hitting singles saying, in the next 90 days, we're gonna go on eight amazing dates. Now for you guys, you're like, dude, eight dates, 90 days? Yep, I'm bunting right now, <laughs> right? But it was being consistent, it, it made me plan, say, hey, I'm gonna take care of the babysitter, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say where we're going, and we're gonna make these eight dates over the next 90 days phenomenal. And crazy enough, guys, it changed my marriage and changed my uh, interaction with Sabrina, uh, being that intentional, not just saying, oh, let's just grab a movie tonight for date night. No, it was really saying, okay, we're gonna plan these dates out and be super, super intentional about them. So that's the start of it, kind of planning that out, saying, okay, here's here's the target I'm going for. And the challenge here that I had and I see a lot with a lot of leaders that I work with is that we still stay in that home run hitter mindset. So a lot of my guys are like, yeah, man, I'm going on 50 dates over the next 90 days. Dude, bull, you're not doing the 50 dates to 90 days. You know, and if they are, they're not great dates, you know? so having to downsize a little bit and say I'm gonna be consistent with singles, that's the challenging part. Definitely. Her, Definitely. what about you? I mean, what? Talk to me, her. Things? I mean, oh, you, 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 have it, you have it all, man. You have five sir. women at home. Her, you are the king of the <laughs> like, castle, brother. Dude. Just Don't tell my wife that. Help, <laughs> help the world right no, now. I, yeah, I mean, I'm taking notes from Alex. I mean, it, it, you really do have to be intentional. But what I, I found in my house, um, you know, our life is very hustle bustle. I mean, you know, most nights don't end, Monday through Thursday really doesn't end till like 8.30. I mean, somebody's going to dance or somebody's going to gymnastics or, you know, somebody's going to Taekwondo, you know. I'm all in for that one, actually. Um, <laughs> need black belts before high school. Uh, so, lots of times in our house, um, what, is, what is really appealing to my wife, um, and even to my daughters to some degree, especially on the weekends, is this, this concept of rest. Like my girls really have, have, they've adopted the concept that Sunday is is a day of rest. They don't wanna do chores and they actually leverage that. <laughs> but, <Love it. laughs> but I mean, having time for them to just rest and catch up and really understanding sort of the concept of like what is each of their love languages. And that's difficult when they're small or difficult. Like, I, I mean, I know from my wife, like if I wanna flirt with her, I'll do the dishes. Oh yeah. Telling you, man. I mean, I, I mean, did the dishes like, last night. <laughs> Boom. I mean, like taking things <laughs> off of her plate, understanding the concept of mental load on a good woman, and how many windows she has open in the back of her head, and how often, and how I can close those windows for my wife first of all, and take things off her plate. Not asking her, "Honey, what can I do?" Because that then puts her in the place where she's the project manager of the whole house, and she's has to, you know, delegate tasks. Instead, just thinking about the overall there. load That's of good. what's yeah. going on in the house, and just automatically taking those things off. They might not be done exactly the way she wants them done, but they're done. Um, so, with my daughters, what that looks like is really observing them and trying to understand, like, what is their love language. I have a daughter, she, she's the biggest snuggler in the world. She wouldn't want to sit down and watch a movie with daddy as much as she would just, she want to curl up in bed, snuggle and talk about whatever she wants to talk about. Um, you know, I have another daughter that she's very active, you know, she's, you know, she's my go-getter in the gym. Um, she wants to go out with daddy and go for a run or she wants to go out for daddy and go do something fun, go for a bike ride um, and get outside. And so really understanding what works for each of them is super important. Um, and just making that making that time. Tonight I'm going on a daddy daughter date with my twins. I have I have seven year old twins. And tonight we're going to go watch the bats over at Lake Alice. So that's it's just a small little it. date, but it's gonna yeah. be really mean, meaningful for them. And very intentional. Yeah. So that's, that's really that, good. Man. You both have that in common. Yeah. Um, one time I sat down with with Alex for coffee or something and you told me and this and this really stuck out to me because I was so like blown away by your routine. Mm. And you told me something that has just stuck with me for so long, which is I can control everything before 8 a.m. Mm-hmm. and I can control everything after 8 p.m. Yep. Everything in between is chaos. Yep. Like things are gonna change. I mean, even yesterday I had a, a 3 p.m. meeting. I'm like walking into this meeting and, and I have team members coming and say, we just had a team member get hit by a car on a scooter. And I'm not, I'm like, wow. I'm like, so your my whole mindset just instantly your changed. My like, yep. yeah, yep. like yep. your priorities, like everything shifts yep. instantly, right? So uh, as soon as I found out it was okay, I was like, okay, like it's not that big of a deal. Like he he's fine. The car's not like everything's fine. We just need to actually. I don't think the car was fine, <laughs> but but I, I was like able to get back Good. and focus, right? But yep. 
But you, you've just told me like just chaos between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And so that has really required for you to start your day super early, super early. in order to knock out some some objectives. And I think and I think you know you have to um, if 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 you. I don't want to say that's going like that defines how successful you are, but I think you're so ambitious, mm-hmm. right? Uh, success is defined in, in so many ways, and we can get into what that means for each of you in a minute. But, but you're so ambitious that that requires you to wake up at four o'clock that's in the right. morning. That's right, Every right. Morning. And I don't think a lot of people understand yeah. that that there's human beings who are waking up at four a.m. Yep. in order to accomplish their goals. So. And, and I'm kind of fascinated by your routine, and I think everybody else would get a ton of value from it as well. So if you could just give us a quick walkthrough of your morning routine, and then maybe a little bit about what your day looks love, like. Love to, man. So, so just to kind of put this all in the frame, my daughters, they love this game called Would You Rather, right? So they play the grossest <laughs> games at the grossest time. We're eating dinner there. <laughs> dad, Dad, would you rather oh, eat a maggot or a fly? <laughs> I'm like, I'm eating rice right now. I wouldn't, rather eat, I wouldn't eat any of that, right? But, but as leaders, oftentimes we play this game of Would You Rather with our life. Would you rather have a booming, successful business and be financially set or have a great family life? Uh, both, <laughs> right? And so... We, we don't really frame up that we can have it all. We can have it all if you're willing to put in the work to do it. Now, it's gonna require more commitment from you if you wanna be successful in every area of your life, and that's why most people don't because they're not willing to put in the work. And so for me, uh, I really begin to realize that if I wanna be successful in every area of my life, it's gonna require me to make a commitment to myself and to routines uh, to really just be disciplined with those. And so. Like you said, I call those the bookends. You know, I can control everything before eight and after eight. And so uh, four o'clock, man, I'm up at four o'clock and I'm pretty rigid with my routine. My wife's like, dude, what are you doing? You know, she knows, <laughs> it, even if I go to bed at 12 o'clock, I'm getting up at four. And it's almost a mental exercise for me to tell myself, I own you my, mentally and I'm going to make sure you do what I say when we when it's time to get it done, right? To handle that mental pressure and stress. So for me, four to four oh seven is stretch time. So it's a mini yoga stretch uh, from four to four oh seven, uh, and then I do my spiritual journaling uh, for the next twenty minutes. And so that's me journaling, kind of getting my thoughts in prayer uh, for myself, and then I spend literally three minutes per uh, woman in my house praying for them. And so I, I literally set a clock and it's me praying for Sabrina, praying for you know anything that may be on her mind or heart. Uh, at, at the same time, my daughter's praying for their future, the friends that will surround them, you know, the challenges that they may face, uh, their, the men that they're going to marry. I'm already praying for that dude right now, <laughs> wherever you are, right? And so kind of go through that routine there. And from there, I go into um, what I call my personal development time. And I spend about 30 minutes learning something for the day. And this could be uh, a podcast that I'm listening to. Uh, I have my own little book here, my little Grant Cardone, you know, Millionaire Mindset kind of book that I go through. That if I, that could be something that I'm listening to, but that's 30 minutes that I spend on myself because oftentimes as leaders, we're giving everything out and we're never investing in ourselves. And I understood that if I want to be the best, I have to invest in Alex first. I have to be selfish, you know, and so life teaches us not to be selfish. If I'm going to be the best for Sabrina, Aubrey, Alexis, my company, I got to be selfish, man. I have to have something to give. And so I spend that next 30 minutes doing that there. And then from there, I go into... excuse me, I go into a meditation. So this is me thinking about my day. I spend 20 minutes uh, a day meditating. And this is kind of me, uh, what I call imagineering, imagining this. So I thought this through. I'm like, oh, we're going to have a great time. This is going to be kick ass today. Um, You know, and so you're thinking how you want these meetings, these interactions to go. And so I learned that from my coach in football. We would do that before big games. He would visually walk us through the stadium. Hey, we're coming to LSU. The fans are rowdy. This is going on. And so he would talk through plays. Who's your coach? Coach Dwayne Dixon and Coach Steve Spurrier, greatest, greatest coaches in the greater era. I have to say that. What years? 96 to 2000. Oh national man, championship? national championship, national championship. Some beautiful years, man. National championship. But hey, we're coming back to those years. We're coming back yeah, to those yeah, years, right? All right, sorry. No, you're good, man. <laughs> <laughs> we had to take a break there, so with that, I know, right? And so, and so from there, um, 
meditation, visualizing my day, what that looks like, going through that. And then from there, I go into a workout. And so I have a workout that's about 30 minutes. And by that time, it's usually about 6.30. And it's time for my girls to get up. And now the chaos starts. But because I was able to get up at 4, I had time to get myself together, mentally invest in myself. And so now, regardless of the chaos, I'm no longer in a reactive mode. I'm I'm proactive and I've powered myself Mm -hmm. up. And I've realized that when I don't do my routines, I'm in a reactive state. It's kind of like, you know, being being in the South, you know, my wife's grandfather, before he passed away, he loves NASCAR, right? So I was sitting and watching NASCAR. I didn't care about it, but I would watch it because I was trying to woo him, you know, marry his granddaughter. But, but, uh, you know, there's always this, the famous words in NASCAR, drivers start your engine. I've never seen a driver start their engine and when when the flag was waved, after the flag was waved to win a race, right? They started beforehand. And so as leaders, we have to take that approach. Okay, how am I starting my engine so that when I walk in the door to work, to a meeting, man, I'm on fire. I'm not dragging in getting started when I get there. Dude, by the time I got there, I've done so much. I'm on fire. I've invested in myself. I've invested in my family, my spiritual life, workout. It's like, dude, I'm bouncing off the walls. Let's go. Let's have a let's have a great day and kind of go from there. So that's my routine, morning routine, buddy. <laughs> awesome. Crazy do problem. you wake Crazy up at 4 a.m.? Crazy her. What time do you start your day? Emphatically, no. Oh, no. <laughs> 4 a.m. <laughs> oh, what about you? Do you start that early or what? No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my, Listen, my question that, is, that's like, my deal. I, that's what yeah. I got to do. Do I have to wake up at 4 a.m. to not, be successful? Not. No, not at all. Not, but that's what Alex has to do because I'm realizing – when I don't, you know, and, it, and it, it's different for everyone. So when I talk to my leaders in construction, I'm saying, hey, listen, you have to really become what I call a game planner for your life, right? Every coach in sports, they game plan. It's okay, what do we have to do to win? I've found out that for Alex to win, I have to get up at four. And if I don't, it's going to be a rough day for everybody that comes in my way. And so I don't like it. I'll be honest with you. It's not like I've fallen in love with this routine, guys. Trust me, when you're going to bed at 12 and waking up at 4, you're like, I hate it. But I like the results. I'm in love with the results. And so, therefore, I'm committed to the habits because I like the results. Yeah. Yeah, So I'm a big Tim Ferriss fan, first of all. And so I don't know if you you guys are are, are, are fans of Tim Ferriss. Um, Did some work with him while he was at Marketing Experiments or – well, I was with, at Marketing Experiments. Uh, did a project. Can with you get him on our podcast? That's what oh, we wanted. On. That's, that's sweet, that dude. I so love it. when he was doing the four-hour the work streams. week, um, we did some work with him at, at, at Marketing Experiments, and I got, you know, I really became a fan of his. And I think one of the, the big primary themes that I've really learned from Tim is that you need to really understand yourself and what's better for yourself. And so I've 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 sort of modulated. I've went through different phases, but I've I try to like understand like where I'm at now. Um, and I did definitely go through that phase. I mean, I, where I was up at 4:30, mm-hmm. um, and that changed. Um, that changed pretty radically for me when I joined Fracture. Um, um, I think very well. Um, some of my best thinking is done very early in the morning. Ooh, love it. So I try to wake up, and um, I used to work out early in the morning. Um, but I found myself, you know, working out and just processing all these great thoughts. Or I, I just. Strategic planning would be would be coming in. It would be all I'd be thinking about. I'm at the gym, and so I started devoting more of my morning time to thinking time or to Love learning it. time. Um, and now I work out at night. I was in the gym last night um, at 8:30. Um, so I try to I try to front end load more of my thinking work right now because where I'm at in this place in time, it just makes more sense to me. Like I can just hit work. Um, I can actually hit the office with just a a ton of mental thinking um, and, and just mental processing around problems we're facing or around strategy already out of the way. Um, because if I try to plan that time for work, uh, invariably um, something will come up, you know, urgency will trump importance mm-hmm. at that particular time, happens all the time, and um, it, it makes it a little more difficult. So I try to insulate that thinking and planning time as much as possible in the morning. And, and like Alex said, you know, the production of my house starts at 6 a.m. because we're out the door at 6.50 um, for school. Um, right. You know, the girls want to do morning mile. They want to run for school, so we oh, get there yeah. a little early. Um, it front, out, front loads that time. So I, I try to get a good chunk of work, not checking emails, not reviewing my tasks in Asana, but devoting time to myself, devoting time to my knowledge of the industry. What do I need to understand so I can better manage my team and better lead Fracture into the future? Um, understand what tools they need, what what strategies we need to employ. Um, so that quality time with the girls starts in the morning at 6 a.m. Um, I get up, we make them breakfast, we make them lunch, we hang out together. We get, you know, 
you know, hair is braided and ponytails and get everything ready in the morning and then we're out the door. Um, and then where I really start to spend time for myself at night, you know, whether it's reading a book or whether it's going back through notes that I made during the day or things to follow up on, podcasts, things like that, um, that's usually all done after after 8 p.m. My wife, um, you know, God bless her, I love her. Um, she is uh, She is usually out like a light, no later than 10 p.m., um, usually 9.30 p.m. She works hard. Um, she's a professor at University of Florida. Again, go, go, go Gators. Gators. Go Gators. Um, and she's a great mom. Um, but she tuckers out early, and usually I have a little bit of time there at the end of the night to go through stuff that I want to go through and to learn and do, do, do different things. You know what this just made me realize? I need more thinking time. So, me too. Oh, I'm learning, you know, I'm learning a lot. I, this, is, this is what, well, I can tell you right now, the, the time where I think is in the shower, I'm, and the problem with that is that I can't write anything down. <laughs> I've actually had family members buy me like those like crowns for the shower dude, where you can like write on the tile and yeah, stuff. Dude, dude, it's yeah, like, listen, it's the they truth. Have, they like, have writable things in the idea. shower uh, that, that you well, can write I'm all like, over there. Now I'm like, Alexa, remind yeah. me, yada, 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 because I have a little Alexa in the- I love it. Just don't do your shower. Yeah, not in the shower, but in the bathroom. I don't want to see that. No, we don't want to see that. We don't want to see that. We don't want to see that. Note to self, Colin showers with Alexa. Right. Wait, Colin, one thing that Herb brought out, which is huge, and most leaders, we don't do this, it's analyzing your energy levels. Right, so I'm, I'm I am I am a nerd when it comes to my schedules, what I do, and it's analyzing your energy level. So yeah. Herb has realized that, hey man, in the morning I'm on fire mentally, ideas are firing through, and so he's analyzed that about himself and saying, hey, this is a perfect time for me to capture and gather all those ideas. And so to your to to the listeners out there today, I want to challenge them to think about that. When are you best? You know, and so some people they have their zones. You know, you think about getting in the zone. Is it 4 a.m.? Is it you know midday? Is it late nights? You know, and, and use that time to really benefit and value. You know, uh, get the most value out of the day for yourself. Context. I mean, context. Yeah. I mean, you're a small business owner. Or you're an entrepreneur. I mean, a a great deal of your own success is going to depend on how productive you right. are. So you need to try to maximize every single hour. You need to maximize every single day. And if if you're not a great thinker in the afternoon, if if, you're, if the synapses aren't firing, man. You know, create context for yourself. I mean, make you know, push your strategic planning or your thinking time into the morning, and spend that time filing paperwork or doing administrative tasks or running errands or doing anything that you have to do that doesn't require a great deal of thinking. I mean, I mean, I have days where it's two thirty in the afternoon. I'm reading an email and I realize that I've been staring at the page for twenty seconds. Mm -hmm. Man, mm -hmm. I close the laptop lid. Mm -hmm. I get up. I go for a walk. Yep. Listen to a podcast. Yep. Or I get up. I walk over to Volta downtown, best coffee shop in town. Yeah. Go get an espresso <laughs> and it. and just you know talk to some other business owners that are usually hanging out in there, or just do anything different. I mean, to sort of break myself out of that out of that momentary lapse. Ty, do you do that? What do you do? Mm. You have secrets? I don't have that many secrets. I'm a I'm a little all time. over the place. So, but. Uh, you know, I've been playing. I was an athlete. I played golf at University of Florida. Ty, I need and, some lessons, dude. Uh, yeah, talk, let's, man. Do let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I still he doesn't admit it, but he was a professional. Ty, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Come on, man. Let's do it. <laughs> Help a brother out. <laughs> and uh, I've been coaching all my life. From uh, I had two little brothers, so coaching them golf, coaching them basketball. I coached AAU basketball, so it's I've learned it in a little different scenario. Yeah. And I think you know, yeah. if we've played sports, I mean, you were a walk on at UF. Yep. You became the captain. You played in the NFL. Um, you know, I've used sports to kind of learn my leadership and my coaching strategy. And I love what both of you guys are talking about, finding your niche or your kind of hot spot, because everyone's different, you right. know, coaching different personalities and what makes people tick. Um, even in businesses, you got tons of different people right here. Um, you know, I think good leaders listen and they really try to uh, invest in learning how to best teach the, the people you're with, you know, in, in the office, some people are better one on one. Some are better in groups. Right. Some are better on email and be you know nice and private. You know, text them or whatever. Um, and I think that's you know opening the door in today's kind of uh, business where there's different ways you can learn via podcasts or emails or books or whatever. And uh, you know, it, there's just opportunity for more people to become maybe better leaders because it's more natural for them to figure out. One, how they can lead not only other people, but maybe their themselves or their family. 
Um, so I've, I've picked up a ton of, I know I've been over here kind of quiet, <laughs> taking a ton of notes. I love it. And I'll have some questions like afterwards. Cool. But, uh, you know, cycling back on the, the sports, when, when did you in particular, Alex, when did you, I mean, your routine didn't start, you right. know, five, six years ago. I mean, being a walk on in the 90s, yeah. you know, mid 90s Gator football, I was in fourth grade when we won oh. the national championship Dude, in 96. Just made me feel like an old grandpa. <laughs> well, it was just, it was, I, love it, I mean, it was the greatest <laughs> era to grow up, you know, from right. Gainesville. Totally yep, I mean, yep, yep. the people in my kind of those younger kids that grew up in those mid 90s, I yep. mean, that, that was incredible. Um, you know, take us through, through that kind of that building into just a championship level organization. It was crazy, Ty. You know, um, at the time I hated it, just being transparent with you guys right now. Uh, I hated the label walk on. I hated that that label, that stigma, uh, not being the scholarship athlete, not being the superstar. But now looking back on it, man, it was the best thing that ever happened to me, yeah. man. You know, because it taught me how to be a grinder, yeah. right? It taught me how to be a grinder, show up every day. You had to make plays every day, you know, where, whereas the scholarship athlete would have multiple opportunities. I get one pass, man. I don't care if it's 10 feet tall and the linebacker's coming to smash you. Dude, you gotta catch this pass, you gotta hold on to it so that you can get another opportunity. Yeah. You know, to the point where, you know, you're wearing the scraps sometimes, you know, so you're wearing the pants that are too big, you know, and, and it challenges you physically, mentally to say, okay, are you willing to do whatever it takes to make it happen? And I made up in my mind at that point in time, I was willing to do whatever it took. You know, if that if, that, if I'm wearing uh, the uh, um, the left tackle's pants, give me some duct tape, dude. I'm just gonna tape them up and I'm gonna make it work. You know, and I'm gonna make it work and I'm gonna make it work well. And so I realized that I, because I was never the most talented, right? And I played with guys who were phenomenal. I mean, I look back at the team in the 90s, just Gator athletics in the 90s. I'm yeah. looking at, you know, the soccer girl, the late, soccer women, I mean, the basketball, the, the baseball, you name it. I'm like, holy shit, these were amazing athletes. Fred yeah, Taylor, Javon yeah. Kurz, Ike Hilliard, Reedell Anthony, Danny Warren. I mean, the yeah. list goes on. James Bates, you, the list goes on and on and on, and I was never at that level. But I understood that I can't change my talent, but what I can change is my effort. Right and, my, and how hard I work. Yep. And so I, I made up in my mind, no one will outwork me, right? And so I was always the first one on the practice field, the last one off, and, and I was willing to put in the time and dedication to do whatever it took, as well as be super analytical, because I had to understand the game yep. and understand what everyone was doing so that I could adjust my game to be able to play and fit in there. And understanding all the moving parts really, really helped me out. You know, um, I, I, a quick story, if, if that's okay, really quickly, just remember my first time playing. So it took me two and a half years, 5,360 hours of practicing before I ever step on, stepped on the field, awesome. right? And so it was just being committed to the weight room, committed to watching film, committed to practice, committed to being on the practice squad, you know, and, 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 and you know, just taking hits. Uh, but I remember just being ready and prepared for that moment, always standing in the same, in the right place, right? Standing behind Coach Spurrier because the camera's always on. So my friends can see me on television. I'm shaking. Did you guys see me? I told you I'm on the team. I was behind Coach Spurrier, right? And so all of a sudden we were playing in Jacksonville, Florida, my hometown. And um, I remember all my family, friends, high school coaches hit me up for tickets. They, we do, we know you're not playing. We just want to come to the game. Get us tickets, right? So they're there in the stands. And a wide against receiver Georgia. against George, yeah. against George, yeah. a fateful, you know, rival, and a wide receiver dropped the pass. And Coach Spurrier was livid. He's throwing his visor. He's classic. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he turns around and give me a receiver, right? And so there I am. I'm like, I've been waiting two and a half years for this moment. And so I, I'll never forget. It. He looked at me, Ty, and he says. No, give me a receiver. Give me a receiver. <laughs> right? so, so he's looking. He's looking over me wow. to find a receiver. Right. And so all of a sudden he he looks and he says, Willis, get in there. I guess I was the last resort. Right. The last resort. Willis, get fantastic. in there. And so he throws me in the game. Old ball and uh, the old ball coach and best game of my life. Time first game of my life. Right. But had five catches for like a hundred yards. Yeah, and all boy. of a sudden it's like that's awesome. This kid can play. I mean, I came in the meeting room the next day like George Jefferson with my hands ready. I'm ready because I'm like, man, I'm ready to play. And of course, Coach Bird ripped me a new one because he's like, you ran this route too short. You did this, bro. You know, but but 
it was my opportunity to take advantage. So that showed me that, you know, we all get that will us get in there moment. Yeah. The question is, will you be ready when they call your number? And I, and I always wanted to be ready from that point on. And I understood that if I was ready, I didn't have to get ready. Right. Yeah. So being prepared. And so that walk on process, that walk on mental, mentality, playing against some of the best of the best, forced me to continually grind, continually work, and that's kind of what got me to where I am now of having that mentality saying, okay, how do I become the best um, leadership, motivational coach in construction? I, I tell everybody, call it, man, I am going to be the Oprah Winfrey of construction. They're like, do what? I'm like, a new drill for everybody. Drill, 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 drill. drill. You know, just kind of giving it out. But I want to have fun with it and, and make people better and great through you know through leadership but it's being the best and being committed to it yeah and it, it shows that you know leadership doesn't start once you're given that position or once you know it's a preparation totally agree because uh, you never know when it's going to happen totally agree yeah and that led i mean you did play in the nfl yeah, or you did, i did to... i did play in the nfl so i out I, I mean i outplayed my talent right and so for me a kid who was super slow right as you guys can see it's not big at all but it was just being intentional and being willing to work, you know, uh, at it, you know, so going from walk on to scholarship athlete shows that process of people seeing your work ethic, seeing your talent, seeing what you're committed to do and your team voting you to be that. Right. So they were saying, we know you're not the most talented, but man, you're the guy we'll follow because we've seen your effort and your grind. And that, that the NFL was the exact same thing. So it wasn't drafted. It was an undrafted free agent. Uh, I remember two hours after the draft crying and wondering, you know, what am I going to do? My, my career is over and getting a call from my agent saying, Hey, Tampa Bay wants to bring you in. And I'm like, Holy cow, this is awesome. Right. So not only was it a great fit, but it was a great opportunity to learn from another great leader, Coach Tony Dungy, which was a phenomenal wow. guy, yeah. classic yep. guy, you know, and I, I remember so much from my time playing there, which, you know, I tell everyone, the NFL does stand for not for long. If you blink, you would have missed my career. It was that fast, <laughs> that quick, in and out, right? But uh, less than a year, but but it was just, a, it was a great experience. And I still remember Coach Dungy when he cut me. You know, I, walk, I walked out of the office because uh, he just did it with so, so much grace and just said, hey, man, you and I both know God has amazing plans for your life. Now, because of the numbers and things here, Tampa's not a good fit, you know, and so, but I look forward to seeing amazing things from you. So him taking that time with me in that couch, uh, on the couch, just talking about that, I remember walking out of there saying, man, that's a great guy. But then the next thought was, damn, he just fired me, though. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> so it showed me you can fire somebody with grace, dude. <laughs> and, yeah. and they'll love wow. you still, right? They'll love you still. Yeah, Herb. That's, so, and so that's huge, man. But it yeah, was just yeah. a great experience. Yeah. Cool. That's absolutely awesome. Yeah. So fun stuff. I love it. Then I've got a couple things written down. So to cycle forward, um, I talked to, I listened to his podcast this morning. So really cool. Um, leadership surge is all you have to search for. Thank you very much. Oh, so. man, all oh, plug. I like it, man. I appreciate <laughs> it, guys. That's what I'm talking about. But, uh, you know, going through your stuff and learning, we didn't know each other before today. Um, you know, you guys are doing some really interesting things with leadership surge. And one of the things I saw is you're taking gamification yep. to construction and the leadership in construction. <clears throat> Um, what does that look like? Because gamification is kind of taking over across yep. all industries. What are you guys doing to, you know, gamify at the leadership level, and then maybe the people entering, you know, that community? So, so Ty, what we end up doing, we 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 realized when I first started, we started doing live sessions, right? And so um, went great, but business owners, CEOs, really begin to challenge me. Say, Alex, we love what you're doing, and it's great but we're having to bring three or 400 people off a job project. This is a million dollar project, multi-million dollar project, and we're having to bring everybody off that project which stops production to be in a three hour session. We're paying you and paying them and losing productivity on the project. What can we do? We can't continue this. And so they sent me back to the drawing board to think about it. And so I really began to say, okay, well, how do we take advantage of technology? Uh, everyone has a smartphone. Uh, it's there. And so we began to really do what we call uh, first and five based off football. So it's the first five minutes of your day. Give me the first five minutes of your leader's day to motivate them and excite them with a short video uh, about leadership. And so we said, hey, we're going to start, instead of doing these two or three hour training sessions, we'll do bite-sized learning, give it in five minutes a day, break down a course, uh, maybe a two-hour course over a two-month period in five-minute increments. They'll watch that video, and then based on that, we saw how competitive 
the frontline leaders are. They want to win at everything. I mean, these guys and ladies are just competitive. And so we said, hey, let's build these short trivia type games based around the content to test it to make sure they get it. Because to, to be a great leader, you have to increase your leadership capacity, which means you have to take massive action, but it has to be consistent. And so typically we go to seminars and trainings, which are great, but those are sporadic. So it's not as consistent enough. So we begin to do trainings, live trainings, follow up live trainings to the next quarter with these short mini games every day in five minute increments. So it's the learning, the knowledge going on and on and on, testing it, giving points. And then we brought in major sponsors like 3M, uh, Thomas and Betts, Milwaukee Tool came on board to start putting prizes to this. And so now people have, you know, 100,000 points and leadership points based on some of the things. And it's really cool because when I go into trainings now, the, the learning continues, right? It continues and they know it because we've been really doing, free, we're having frequent learnings in these short chunks, so it's really helped. Yeah, Crazy right. cool, man. Really cool, really yeah, that's cool. that's awesome. I, Very cool. Um, I wanna talk about Fracture for a little bit because we're running short on time. Oh, let's do it. And I don't know what you know of them or what you know of them, but and I, I'm gonna, hopefully it's okay for me to throw some numbers out there. <laughs> when Herb came on at Fracture. This was an eight hundred thousand dollar business. Is that approximately right, or am I getting this wrong? Yeah, I think the Fracture forecast for twenty thirteen was okay. Was in the you know seven eight hundred thousand dollar range. Okay. So and you guys are going to do close to thirteen million this year. My my goal for this year is thirteen million. So. And he won't take the credit, <laughs> but it has so much to do with his leadership and everything that they are doing marketing wise. And I'm like blown away because they're, I'm constantly, I, they're get, they're, I ask him what the biggest challenge is and the biggest challenge is, is growth, like space, right? Like you're continuing to grow. So I mean, just, just talk, uh, just tell us a little bit about Fracture and, and what that, you know, how challenging it has been uh, with with the growth, what what the projections look like, or where what fractures future looks like, um, all of it. Just give us a, a nice roundabout. Yeah. Summary. So so to so to reference a couple things that Alex said. Um, so what what would attract me, you know, to a company that um, you know is it, you know is is in growth mode. It's a startup, very volatile. Um, there's not a lot of stability, which is what a, a wife and a family, <clears throat> excuse me, um, needs. And mm. when I first joined Fracture, what I saw were a couple founders that were grinders. I mean, they had a great set of values. They had great vision for what they want to accomplish. They had a great deal of focus in that they weren't letting other opportunities that seemed to be, you know, very large, bright, shiny objects. <clears throat> Um, you know, very easy to get distracted. Um, they really had this very dialed in focus of basically this core mission around helping people change the way that they think about their own favorite photos and how they display their own favorite photos. Um, they didn't want to go out and have fracture prints in, in Motel 8s or you know, even in, in you know, Hyatt Regencies. They didn't, want, they didn't envision this big B2B model. They wanted, to take, um, they wanted to take a great product out to the masses. Uh, they had this B2C vision, and I love that. Um, very easy to get distracted from that. There were grinders, um, very hard workers, um, and they were not caught up in you know, a lot of the startup hype um, that you see exist in all around the country. Um, they were just dialed in on creating a company that was very values driven and, and effective. So when I came into Fracture, um, I saw a lot of potential. Um, I knew we had to build a strong team. Uh, I knew we, knew we had to put a lot of new processes in place. And more importantly, I wanted to be able to measure every single thing we were doing. Um, I love Peter Drucker's quote, if it's not measured, it's not managed. Love it. Um, so we worked very hard on measuring what was working. And um, the, uh, the growth goals, um, they didn't necessarily scare me. And it wasn't always like a clean, you know, easy ride, you know, through Fracture. But 
we've just had a, a very a, a very long devotion um, to accomplishing this goals and staying focused on it um, and slowly building up team. Honestly, team has been such an important part of what I do. And you talk about not taking the credit. And there's a reason for that. I mean, I have a team that works very hard. Um, and I think one of the things I'm absolutely most proud about is that I've only lost one team member since I've been a fracture. It's awesome. I have this. A lot I have this man. great group, uh, group, great group of people that work for me at Fracture, and um, some have been there for four years, um, and they've stayed with it. I have one amazing girl that um, she started off as an unpaid intern. You know what she did after her after unpaid internship? She asked if she'd come back for another unpaid internship. That's incredible. Um, and right now, that same young lady is my lead project manager, and she does all of our email marketing campaigns, and she is an integral part of the team. And she's worked her way up, and she deserves every bit of what she's been able to accomplish. And so, so getting to work with being surrounded by people like that, that are all devoted and that really want to work on this and, and create this great, incredible, inspirational, aspirational company is huge. And what, what's happened at Fracture over the past year is that we've wanted to continue to separate ourselves and prepare the brand for the future. Um, we don't want to build a company that people, you know, where people enjoy the product um, and people um, are looking for that next sale that you have. We want people to come to Fracture because they understand that their personal values overlap with the company values. And they understand that the message that we're constantly putting out there is a message that resonates with their values and what they want, and the way they envision the world. We want to be a company that you buy from because you like, you feel good when you support this company. Um, and so that is really what we've been projecting over the past year. Great content. Um, focus on the moments that matter in your life, whatever that looks like for you. If it's that you know, vacation to Tahiti that you, you've been saving up for for 10 years now that you're an empty nester, or whether it's the birth of your first child, or whether it's graduating from high school, whatever it is, I mean, in your personal life, we want you to focus on those moments. And so the message we're constantly trumpeting is focus on the moments that matter. Um, we have a Memorial Day uh, uh, email going, coming out this weekend, and we're getting a feature that's awesome story of this soldier who basically recreated the, the very famous kiss scene in, in, in New York City. So, and he has all these special moments and he's built this fracture wall around him and his, his wife and places they've went. And it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. It makes me want to put more fractures like that on my own living room wall. Um, but, you know, just, I think what inspires me is working for a company where every day I get to go to work and work with a great team of people. Our production side, let me just tell you about our production team. Do you know how hard it is to scale an on-demand manufacturing company, I cannot start your order until you send me an image. So, I mean, when we get busy, Valentine's Day, I mean, we might have an extra two or 3,000 orders that come in within a few days' time. Like, they have to be able to scale up very quickly on the manufacturing side. And let me tell you, they've gotten incredibly good at it. And so Fracture, as, as a company, hasn't just evolved and improved from a marketing standpoint. We've had to, we've had to grow and improve in every direction. And really, I mean, the, the manufacturing side component of Fracture has been incredibly powerful. The growth over there has been incredibly powerful. And it's enabled me as a marketer to think bigger. We couldn't do $13 million in businesses this year if, if, Manufacturing could who, who was behind yeah. us wasn't supporting it. Yeah. If our support team wasn't on spot and doing everything they can to make sure that every customer question is answered, um, I mean every single piece of the company has to be moving in the same direction and growing, you know, in lockstep. Herb gave me a tour the other day. Yeah. And where the manufacturing is taking place that used to house the offices as well, and the manufacturing, <laughs> had, and I like, oh, I was expecting to see like offices when I went in there, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like the That's manufacturing, all it's all manufacturing oh now, God. and they, they, kicked pushed, this out. they pushed all the offices back <laughs> behind it. like the innovation hub back there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, dude, this is insane. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just so fast, it's just so fast. Yeah. That's you what know? I was gonna ask. At what point in time, I'm always fascinated with business owners who've had this massive growth and handle that, right? Because that can destroy so many people, so many companies. Yeah. At what point in time, you coming in and you, to where you are now, when did you envision that you could be at this level? Was there something, a turning point or something that you saw to say, you know what, we can be 
$13 million company. We can be $50 million company. What did you see? So uh, I, th I would say that I think for the past two or three years, um, my CEO, B, um, B Lokesh, great guy, he, um, he and I both have, have had this vision. I think we've, we've both been able to see it. It really started with um, the hiring of uh, Chris Rule, our production manager. Came in with a lot of production experience and really opened up the production side and enabled us to see it. Um, last year, um, you know, I think one of the biggest compliments that I've, I've received is I know when I was hired at Fracture, when it be called my references, um, one of the things that was expressed uh, to him by several people was that Herb's the kind of guy that he doesn't see problems, he sees challenges. And if he runs into a wall, he'll, he'll go over it, he'll go around it, he'll go through it, he'll do whatever he has to do to accomplish the goal. Like he will solve the, I'll solve the challenge. Um, and so really we, we had this, we had this huge challenge of how to drive in enough traffic to constantly keep manufacturing at very solid um, levels that didn't really fluctuate. What's really bad in manufacturing is when one month you have you know, 10,000 orders and the next month you have 100,000 orders. I mean, you wanna keep mm -hmm. manufacturing operating at a certain capacity, right? Um, and that's difficult in an on-demand world. It's very seasonal. Obviously, there's a lot more buyer motivation on Mother's Day. There's a lot more buyer, buyer motivation in around the holidays, Christmas, Father's Day, things like that, Valentine's Day. So we have to make sure we maintain these really even levels. And last year, um, we were really able to get some of our marketing channels very dialed in, um, very cost effective, very measured, um, even if they're offline. Um, we spend money on television, very hard to measure, you know, a, a, an engagement that comes from somebody watching a TV ad and then they open up their smartphone and Buy they something. do a search for your company. Like, how do you connect the dots there? That's right. difficult to measure, but we figured out a way to do it. Um, it's very effective, and now we're able to scale in a way that, like, literally, I mean, is incredible. So what what that means for me is I never would have been able to measure that if I didn't devote that time um, as a CMO to constantly understanding new technologies, understanding what's out there, where the, where the world of marketing and advertising and, and where, it, where it crosses the line with technology, um, where those two mesh, and how, how things have grown, how things have improved. If I wasn't constantly pushing it and looking for more information and then trying to understand where those technologies um, become very applicable for a company like Fracture, um, if I didn't understand that, then we'd still be struggling. Um, but by constant, I, as a CMO, I mean, e even as a CFO or as a CEO, I mean, I think one of the most important things that you owe the company is to really staying on top of the changes that are happening in your industry. And within the world of digital marketing, that means understanding a lot of technology. Um, you know, understanding what your marketing quote unquote tech stack should look like. You know, what tools are you using? Are they still the right size tools for where you are? When do you cross that invisible line and you jump up to using an enterprise level you know, tool for marketing attribution or for analytics or for tag management, whatever it is. Um, and so a lot of what I do is constantly evaluate whether or not both my team is best fit and the tools that we're using are best fit. Okay, so I only have like 35 more questions, <laughs> but we're out of time. <laughs> yeah. We're running really, really, really short on time. Yeah, I've just got so one I'm, thing for her. Yeah, uh, go ahead, yeah, yeah, you got it, dude. For her. So, um, we don't know each other either, but I think uh, Fracture and what I do with Best of Gains all goes kind of hand in hand. So I'm excited to explore um, that opportunity moving forward. I know you guys have a, a really awesome blog and you guys did a thing on exploring Gainesville, which we'll be sharing today on Instagram on Best of Gainesville. Oh, nice. And uh, you know, I think Colin and I take photos after every session and we're gonna have to start building a little Fracture wall here with all of our guests. Um, so That'd be I'm sick, actually. Yeah, I'm Dang. excited for some stuff. So That'd be really sick. we're up to set up a tour and uh, and get some stuff going because the first time I learned about fracture was at an eighth judicial circuit banquet. They give them as awards. Yes. Yeah, and that was the first time I got my hands on them, and I was like, wow, these are these are amazing. I don't. So congratulations, you guys are yeah. you guys are hitting every every side. I don't know if we were the first company to do this, but like we, but 
I had contacted them early on, like when they had started, and said, I want to take our Vespa Gainesville logo and divide it up into fractures. So when yeah. you like look at a wall, it, it made the logo. And it the logo out of yeah. I was like, I literally want well, fractures fractured <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> like on the wall to like, like formulate idea. a logo. And then we yeah. wrote our core values on it, have everybody sign it. Was a, it was a display piece in the old dealership for so long and it was so awesome. Cool. So um, we're, we're so out of time, but, but this podcast is very Gainesville focused. So I want to just ask a couple of really quick questions regarding, you know, I mean, Gainesville, I mean, this is this is why we're doing this, uh, like highlighting talent like you guys here in Gainesville and showing that like, this is what's here. This is what is here. Um, so, you know, what is it about Gainesville? I feel like, Alex, you could do this from anywhere. Like, why are you here in Gainesville? Good call on that. Um, I mean, you travel all over the I place. I travel anyway. all over the place, and it's hard to travel in and out of Gainesville. I mean, this is like the one of the diff- most difficult airports to travel out of. But it's a great place, man. I mean, we 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 were at a crossroads. My family and I thinking, do we move back to Jacksonville? Where do we go? And when Sabrina and I sat down, looking at the girls, looking at the people here, her, we just said, man, this place is phenomenal. You know, and, and I didn't know that as a college student because you have this college side, and you're like, oh, who wants to live in Gainesville? You're in a bubble, right? You're in a yeah. bubble. But once you get out of that and you go and explore, you're like, holy cow! There's a whole nother side of Gainesville. The professionals, the the the, the lifestyle, you know, the activities that you can do with your kids and, and as couples, and I mean, and the surrounding areas. It was amazing, and so I'm willing to, you know run through the Atlanta airport trying to catch the last bullet home to live here because it is an amazing place and the community that's here. You know, so you have that college town feel almost even in the business community. You know, sitting here talking with her now, I'm like, I'm reaching out to this guy just to kind of hang out. And you can't do that in most cities because people are just kind of standoffish, whereas here, it's a phenomenal place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just really, really quickly, I'll add to that. Um, in 2006, my wife graduated from University of Florida with her PhD. Um, and I was working remote um, at the time. I'd been working, you know, pretty much remote for you know three or four years. And um, she asked me, she's like, you know, do you? I, I need to go do a postdoc. Um, do you care where I do a postdoc? And I told her, no. Make the best decision for you. And you know, I can work from wherever. Um, it's great. Just put me close to a big airport um, if you can. And um, so. Uh, she chose Charlotte, and we moved to Charlotte for three years. Great town, very clean. It's like a smaller, cleaner version of Atlanta. Um, we absolutely love Charlotte. We love living there. But when it came time to leave, um, when she finished her postdoc work, you know, we looked at each other, and, and we both disagreed that we miss Gainesville so much. We uh, the, the people were different. The culture was different. We wanted we wanted that vibrant, outdoorsy, um, just. Uh, athletic almost you know culture I mean and we've never regretted it we came back here in 2009 a lot of changed in three years um, there's a lot more construction um, and it, so much of change but we absolutely love it here and now she's a tenure track professor at University of Florida and I don't envision us leaving anytime soon um, I love working for Fracture I want to continue to see Fracture grow and Fracture is committed to Gainesville um, in a way that will become even more relevant next month um, Got a big announcement coming, um, but yeah, I mean, I, we absolutely love it here. Awesome. What's That's your awesome. favorite restaurant? My favorite restaurant in uh, Gainesville, I have to say, without a question, would be Emiliano's. Emiliano's. They Good have a choice. wonderful chef. So <laughs> they have a wonderful chef. The chef is his brother. <laughs> Just a <laughs> great call. Oh, I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead. I and love like, that place. I do love Emiliano's. I mean, it is great. It, it, is, great. Great. it is great food. <laughs> so I know, I know, Pat, Pat, I know Patrick well. Chef Patrick I never knew. I never knew. Oh that. man, That's very cool. Brother. I love yeah. it. I've known Patrick for a long time. What's yeah. your favorite From restaurant? Gainesville Country Club times. Yes. Yeah. 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 Iron Chef competition when he was at Gainesville Country Club. There's so many great ones here. To be honest with you, I'm gonna go. Emiliano's is my is 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 right up there. You know. I'm a sushi guy, so I'm dragonfly right oh, now. Oh yeah, I'm dragonfly. I'm going dragonfly. It's, it's, it's a great fruit. Brooklyn works at dragonfly. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Love for dragonfly. What's what's yours? Mine's uh mine's the top for sure. Yeah, yeah top. Story. I like can't can't go oh, wrong. Top. Top. Can't go wrong. With there, top. I've every single dish is like the greatest, and and, clams, and I man. still like get the Mastodon burger almost every single time because it's just like so good. <laughs> Um, but no, it's it's the greatest. Yeah. And they have like that garlic. I'm a huge ranch fan. There, I actually have a blog that was like the greatest ranch in Gainesville, and the top one is like this garlic ranch that they have there. Oh, I like I, it. I, I love ranch dressing. 
Um, what about you? Oh, nice to I can't play favorites, but yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you haven't been to Afternoon, Afternoon, um, Afternoon in the New Grove Street area next to Cypress and Grove, you can find out. me having coffee there. Really? Lots, lots of mornings. Oh, it's it's amazing. That's yeah. awesome. That's good cool. stuff. Very good. Guys, we have to wrap up, but thank you so much for being here. You guys are just mind blowing to me in so many ways. I admire you both. Like I tried to surround myself with these guys as much as possible because uh, the, the energy that you guys bring and just everything that you do from a leadership standpoint, as a father, as a husband, I mean, leading your teams is just incredible. So I, I thank you so much for being here and um, that's pretty much it for me. Yeah, all I'd, all I'd say is uh, where can we find you guys? Yeah, please. What's the best place? Instagram, Facebook, what's the what's the tag? And the companies and all that. Yeah, so um, um, Instagram, um, I post probably more to Instagram than I do to Facebook okay. these days uh, after being on Facebook for nine years. And Fracture's it's website. At, it's <laughs> at uh, Fracture Me, correct? Uh, right. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, easy to find Fracture, um, www.fractureme.com and, um, or fracture.me, um, okay. either one work. and. Search for us on Instagram or Facebook. We're very easy to find. Cool. How about you, Alex? Uh, for me, Facebook is uh, probably the best uh, there, and that's uh, either Leadership Search. You can search for us at Leadership Search or uh, personal, just Alex Willis, you know, and just kind of follow some stuff there, as well as YouTube channel. Yeah, go check this guy well, out on YouTube. YouTube. There's some yeah. awesome yeah. stuff yeah. happening yeah. with this guy fun on stuff, YouTube. Fun stuff there, Ty. Cool. So, uh, and that's just Alex Willis. Go search there. Alex Willis. This there is the first go. one at the top. So, so a lot of fun. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Gainesville, thank you for tuning in. We love you, and we will see you next time. We are out.